Greetings, my children. This is, of course, Dr. Jimmy. And tonight, I am wearing a Time Lord t-shirt. Because I am one. Yes, you might have wondered how I know about Horror Nights ahead of time. It's very simple. I simply go to the event in the future before I make the video. That's how I know. You don't believe me? Well, here's the test. A few months from now at Halloween Horror Nights 26, go there and there I'll be in the future. Just like I told you. See? <laughs> All right. If I'm not there, then I'm sorry. <laughs> All right then. So, I would like to make a strange change to the way I did things in the past. Beginning in the year 2011, I began to make house cocktails. That is, to make cocktails signifying each and every haunted house at the event of Halloween Horror Nights 21. And then I designed cocktails over the years at the other haunted houses, Halloween Horror Nights 22, at the other events, 22, 23, 24, 25. Those of you who are Facebook friends with me you can find these on my uh, in my albums and uh, albums in my my photos on my Facebook page. <coughs> I've also posted them at various Facebook groups over the years, and uh, I have in my history videos begun to discuss the cocktails I created for Halloween Horror Nights 21. In Halloween Horror Nights 22, I not only made them for the houses but also for the legions. And uh, but mostly I only do it for haunted houses. This year I want to do something differently. In all those years, I would go to Finnegan's Bar and Grill, and utilizing whatever liquors they have behind the bar, I would invent a cocktail that would uh, coincide with one of the haunted houses, you see. But uh, running out of ingredients. They have a limited uh, source of ingredients at. Uh, at, uh, at uh, Finnegan's. In fact, sometimes they don't quite have something I really like. For example, last year, Purge cocktail. I came up with one for the Purge house, but I really wanted a floral note because of the, you know, the flowers. The, and Saint Germain would have been perfect because it's made from elderflowers, but unfortunately, they don't have Saint Germain at Finnegan's, so I had to come up with something else. And I've had a similar problem with other things. In fact, one of the haunted houses last year run Blood, Sweat and Fears. Uh, all those different international uh, reapers. And so I ended up going outside of Finnegan's and going to City Walk in order to get some sake from Japan and some cachaça from Brazil. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the Egyptian beer I wanted uh, anywhere even in City Walk. So I've decided this year to do things quite differently. Rather than wait till the event begins, as soon as houses are announced, or in this case, a couple about a month afterwards, I will then make the cocktail here for you using ingredients I myself have procured from my own uh, liquor cabinets. All right, appropriately enough stuff that wouldn't have at Finnegan's and maybe not even at Universal. So, to start with, the Texas Chainsaw. Massacre was the first announced house, and I'll do one for the Exorcist in a few days. I can't do both tonight because I'd get freaking drunk out of my mind drinking both of these cocktails, especially what I got planned for some of them. But we start with a cocktail designed for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So it has to have something to do with a Lone Star State, Texas, of course. And of course, I immediately thought of Lone Star beer, but I couldn't find any of that around here, so I decided to do something different. And I found this lovely thing. Here, the first ingredient is Yellow Rose Outlaw Bourbon. Yes, it's an outlaw bourbon. Bourbon's supposed to only be made in Kentucky. But they flaunt regulation and call themselves bourbon, not just whiskey, but bourbon. And it's made in Texas. See right there, made in Texas. So we start with that. Yellow Rose. Very Texan, in fact. If you say, the stars at night are big and bright, you hear clapping coming out of the bottle. Deep in the heart of Texas. It's really Texan. So, I procure my shot glass, and then I procure a rocks glass filled with ice. All right, so what I do then is I pour 
the lovely Texas bourbon into the shot glass. See? Then I drop it into my this like chemistry with Mr. Wizard, if you're old enough to remember that, or Bill Nye the science guy, okay? Put it into my rocks glass. Alright. Now that's not enough, it has to be a cocktail. What do I add to that? Well, I have to make it a bit more edgy, because it takes a chainsaw. Well, to be edgy, we have to go below the border. Now, if Donald Trump gets elected, he'll build a nice war, a, a great war, a beautiful war, fabulous war, and I'll make Mexico pay for it. Yeah, and uh, he'll build this wall there, and uh, and then uh, all the Mexicans can't cross the wall, except they can tunnel under it, just like El Chapo. Oh, but uh, there's always a way around the wall. Hadrian learned that, uh, the Chinese emperors learned that, everybody, the Israelis learned it, everybody learned it. You can't keep people out of the wall. Someone's going to find a way to get around the wall, any wall, every time. Yeah, it's, it's a matter of that. You need to have angry dogs. Uh, you need to be like Mr. Burns, release the hounds. You need to have killer bees. You need to have mines. Even then, you can't you, you can't keep people out. They did that in Berlin. They had the angry dogs in the mines. Didn't have the killer bees, but they had lots of Germans with machine guns. Nevertheless, people got through the wall even then. They went over with a hot air balloon. I saw it in a Disney movie once. Okay, so here we are, sneaking over the wall, in spite of Donald Trump, is some tequila. That will give it an edge, yeah. So I pour myself a shot of tequila. Uh, this is not the best tequila. This is this is rather very utilitarian sales of gold. Uh, if you want to be fancy, you can get Patron silver or something. But for the purposes of this cocktail, uh, the whiskey needs to be special. The tequila can just be any tequila because it has to be edgy. So it needs to be a little rough. Uh, you might want to put some lime in there. Stirring it, stirring it, stirring it, stirring it, I'm stirring it, stirring it, so it's all stirred up now, it's whiskey and tequila and the same thing, a shot of each, it's a bit, it's already got some Texas with an edge, yeah, is that good enough for Texas chainsaw? Almost, it's got to have bite, I was thinking of some barbecue sauce, but that would be ridiculous. Who <laughs> would put barbecue sauce in a cocktail? Oh no, let's go back below the border again. I've got here, first I take the lid off. There's a lid. Took the, here we have Cholua. Yes, from Mexico. It is one of my favorite hot sauces. And put some of that right in the cocktail. Just put that on top. Right on top. Let it sink in. And look, look at that. Look at that. See, look at that. Just like blood! <laughs> oh, appropriate. That'll give it the proper bite. Now we've got a real Texas Chainsaw Massacre cocktail. Now, you know that Yellow Rose bourbon? It is really smooth. It really is. It's wonderful stuff. It's got notes of caramel and vanilla. I'm not making, I'm not being pretentious like those wine tasters. Oh, I can taste old shoe leather in my mum's butt. No, whatever. No, it's not like that. It, it's for real because I had uh, one of those little ice cream cones, one of those mini little, little drums, a little ice cream cone with, with vanilla and caramel uh, earlier in the day before I first tried this bourbon. And I tasted it. Oh my God, it reminds me of an ice cream cone. It has the same notes. Then I read the label, it talks about vanilla and, and caramel. I said, well, damn right it does. I it tastes just like that. I, so it's really quite good. But it's too smooth and too sweet for a uh, Texas chainsaw cocktail. That's why we have to add the tequila and, and the chalua. And now it's really deadly. And look, it's got blood in it. It sort of looks like there's blood in your eye. So this is my Texas chainsaw cocktail. Now the scary part, actually tasting it. Holy fuck, I feel like Leatherface is soaring me in half right now. Bloody hell. I, mean, I know my face is gonna be, oh, see, the light went out of my eyes. <laughs> no, there we go. Oddly enough, that's damn good. I didn't expect it to be good. I thought it would be repulsive. 
that actually tastes good. Amazingly enough, the tequila and the whiskey go, it actually tastes smooth. I thought it'd be more rough. Hmm. That's really good. I'm surprised how good that is. There's no lime or anything in there, just just the whiskey and the and the tequila and the hot sauce. And the hot sauce isn't even burning me yet. It will at the end though, because it all sunk to the bottom like little bits of gore. So the hot sauce will get on, you know, an aftertaste later. That's actually much better than expected. Well, that worked out quite well. That's my Texas chainsaw, uh, my Texas chainsaw cocktail. First, however, I must get the approval from Leatherface himself. So I'll be right back. <clears throat> So, uh, Mr. Leatherface, what do you think of the cocktail? Damn good. He likes it. Okay, Leatherface liked it. There we go. Cheers. Mmm. Definitely not bad. Okay, next time I do a video, it might be my part 16 for Horror Nights History for having Horror Nights 21. Or it might be my... Uh, History, my uh, Horror Nights Who's Who about Pazuzu, which I've been thinking about doing for a long time, uh, utilizing my knowledge as a uh, professor of religion about who, what Pazuzu is from Babylonian religion. But uh, uh, it might be the next cocktail. At some point before the week is over, I'll do my Exorcist cocktail. It's going to be even scarier than this one. And hopefully it'll taste at least as good as this one. I I'm surprised how well this came out. Mm. But they wouldn't have those ingredients at Finnegan's. They might have the salsa, but they wouldn't have the yellow rose. And I don't think they have the chalua. So that's quite good. I'm quite pleased with that. It worked out very nicely. And they wouldn't have Leatherface. Is he, isn't he adorable? Look at his little chainsaw. Hello, I've got a little chainsaw. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to saw your face off and wear it like a mask. <laughs> Look at my little necktie. Yay! <laughs> that little Bubba. This is Bubba Sawyer. And in the back, all the detail they've got in the back. Look at this guy. See a little bit of his mask where it ties in the back. Oh, it's such a lovely job, the little Funko people. Uh, I've, been, I've been collecting them uh, for, for the upcoming houses and for old houses too, for different events. You know, anything that has been at IP at Horror Nights, I'm hoping to collect them. So I've got all the Universal Classic Monsters, Dracula, Frankenstein, uh, Bride, Wolfman, Mummy, Creature, and the Phantom. They don't have them for the Hunchback, though. Hunchback was there in 91, just like the Phantom on Main Stage Madness. No, they don't have that. I've got Reagan McNeil, because she's going to be there this year, but she was also back in 91 on the bed. Yes, I remember that. And... Uh, I'll be getting monsters soon because they were there with the monsters and the phantom and main stage madness, you see. What was the first time Leatherface appeared at Horror Nights, you know? Anyone anyone want to guess? Actually, 1992. The third ever Horror Nights. People don't realise the third ever Horror Nights was Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios Hollywood. Didn't have a number because they acted like it was the first one. This was beginning for six nights, beginning Thursday, October 22nd, 1992. Because in Universal, Florida, Halloween Horror Nights 2, the same year, started the Friday the 23rd. So that was the year Hollywood started first. Usually, Orlando starts first, the same night, but time zone difference, right? Three hours difference. So, But that was the year they started a day earlier in Hollywood. And so it was six nights, whereas the event in, in Orlando was only five nights. And that event in Hollywood not only saw the very first Chucky insult in your face insults later, insult in Forum later years, but that, that, that year in 92, they also had a, a, a terror tram scenes from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And to my knowledge, that was the first time it was used as an IP at Horror Nights before it ever got used in Orlando. Also, Horace Pinker from Shocker. Yes, I've seen the footage. The footage is still available in an NBC News report on the event back in '92, and you can see the other face with his chainsaw and Horace Pinker and his wheel and his uh, in the electric chair. 
So it's kind of cool to see that. that those are two early IPs they used in Hollywood before they ever used them in, in Orlando. I think they ever used Shocker in Orlando, but, uh, but yeah. So that was Texas Leatherface's first appearance at Horror Nights was in Hollywood in 92. So there you go. All right, I've spent way too much time on the video already. Next time I do a cocktail, it'll be for The Exorcist. And hopefully it'll be a good one. I've already know what I'm going to make, and it's going to be quite exciting, I hope. Quite visual like this one was. And again, something they could not make at Finnegan's because they don't have the ingredients that I want to use for The Exorcist. So till then, have fun. And remember, this is Sunday the 29th when I'm making this at night. I'm doing this at night when I do the cocktails because then you can see better. Also, who wants to drink in the daytime? Uh, unless you're a real alcoholic and I'm not. Uh, not really. <laughs> but in the at night, the lighting's better so you can see what I'm doing with the cocktail better. Correct. And uh, next one, hopefully later in the week, will be the Exorcist cocktail. And I hope to be really, well, let's say, a spiritual experience. <laughs> Uh, probably make a puke green pea soup. You're going to die up there. Anyway, that's later. So till then, have fun. 110 days to Horror Nights as of right now. Ta-da!